Hey, how's it going? I'm Nick, and I'm the host of the Echo Academy podcast, a podcast where we share tools and strategies that help make your life better. In this episode, we talk to Mong Chin Yeo. Mong Chin, or Mongabong, as she is more commonly known on social media, is a social media influencer with over 300,000 followers across her platforms. By definition, being an influencer means you're constantly in the public eye with a certain level of influence over the people that follow you. So today, I speak with Mong Chin on what that experience has been and what people who want to have that kind of popularity or fame, as you might call it, take advantage of it without having to be taken advantage of. To find out more about Mong Chin, her work, or this episode, check out echo.academy forward slash mongabong. That's E-K-H-O dot A-C-A-D-E-M-Y forward slash M-O-N-G-A-B-O-N-G. So without further ado, here's my interview with Mong Chin. Perhaps a, a good place to start would just really just be to understand, like, because you started off as a blog shop model, right? Yes. Am I right? Yeah. Uh, what made you? What? What made? What? What was the 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 point where you decided that hey, this could be a career, and you decided to focus on your own personal brand? Right. Um. So of course, when I started out modeling. It was mostly mainly to earn more pocket money. Of course, yeah. yeah and I, I didn't get scouted or anything. You know, it wasn't really fancy. It was how it happened was I had a primary school friend who owned an online shop. Like she was selling clothing and stuff. And uh, her model was sick one day. And she just Facebook messaged me and asked me if I was willing to try to be her model. And she was paying me. I'm not even kidding you. It was like, ten dollars an hour or something it was like really really little but yeah. i mean i didn't mind because i was like okay if you don't mind me having no experience i'm just gonna try yeah so i started with her and of course i guess because i was pretty cheap she continued with me <laughs> <laughs> you know cheap to hire i mean yes. <laughs> yeah so um that was how i started and yeah. i got more and more clients from there and i got better at what i was doing with time mm -hmm. and experience so that was when instagram wasn't even around. Yeah. How and old then, were you then, by the way? Uh, I was 19 or 20. Okay. Yeah, like in first and second year of university. Got it. All right. So Instagram only came around around like second year of university. And it was honestly, nobody was making money off of Instagram. Everyone's just, you know, I had it just like a hobby. It was like an online diary. It's a new thing. Yeah. Um, and I would first start posting like the clothes that I would get for free from all these people that I model for. And just like as a way of thanking them, I would just post it on my Instagram and tag them. Um, I didn't have many followers <laughs> and they didn't pay me to do the posting. Right. But increasingly, I think more and more people saw me as like a fashion, um, you know, a style person that they wanted to follow. And that's when brands started coming in and say oh i want to be featured on your page i want you to wear my clothes and post it on your yeah. instagram for these people who they want to target right so that's how and it at, started and at this point uh how many followers did you have when when the brand started you know at this in? point now uh, no not not at this point but w uh, at that point at where that point, i think it was like only like a thousand five hundred wow and they but, were already yeah, yeah but you must remember that we didn't even have like a million like the, the highest instagram at a point in time was like maybe a million all right that's because right. it was so new that's right yeah so having a thousand five hundred uh followers is is like having a thousand five hundred friends that you speak to daily yeah it at a point in time it was pretty powerful yeah right that's true yeah so um yeah and anyway they weren't paying me a lot of money anyway <laughs> so right. yeah it was it was just like a, oh sure you know free clothes <laughs> and a little bit of money why not yeah and i wasn't definitely it was not sustainable to do it full-time for sure yeah so it only started to get more like bigger and more like i was more serious uh into doing it when i was in my final year of uni 
and that was in 2016. Mm-hmm. And uh, I only had three modules left to, to complete. So I kind of had a little bit more time to do it more than just as a hobby. Yeah. So that's what I did. And I gave myself, you know, that last four months to just really see how far I can go if I focused on this. And it, yeah. And like, I never looked back after I graduated. That's yeah. awesome. So I yeah. just completely did it full time. What yeah. what did you study in uni, by the way? Um, I did accounting in SMU. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's completely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm an SMU alum too. Really? Yeah. I graduated 2014. Oh my. Yeah. Yeah. 2016 then. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's unlikely we would have crossed. Well, maybe. I'm sure I, don't, we I don't know. One second. Yeah, yeah, I mean, maybe, yeah, but school's big, right, so... You did yeah. accounting? No, I did a uh, business, right, yeah, right, business, right. yeah. But, because, uh, cause, you know, like, especially in, 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 in the Asian context, I would say, like, uh, it's at least, well, maybe even now, it's 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 seen as a bit of an unconventional career for choice. For sure, for sure, yeah. So, having that accounting degree and, you know, well, I guess... I guess, you know, when brands start talking to you and, you know, fashion is your passion, it's hard to say no, but was it a difficult decision? Definitely. I mean, if you think of, I mean, I, I mean, to, to begin with, it was hard to convince my parents, right? I mean, I did this seemingly pretty prestigious <laughs> and like, you know, bright future kind of degree um, for four years. And now I'm going to give it all away to dive into something that I never, like, even studied before. <laughs> right. Not even marketing. I've right. never studied marketing. Uh, not even how to do photography, how to, not even fashion or makeup. Like, nothing is relevant, was relevant at that yeah. time. So, um, it was a huge gamble and I had to convince a lot of people. But I guess, in my mind... I, w- I always told myself that I will always be seen as a wannabe until I get somewhere. Mm-hmm. So if I get somewhere, then people won't keep thinking like that I'm wasting my time, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to work hard at it and prove to them. So that's what I did. And I told my parents and I told myself that I would just give myself two years. And if it doesn't work out, I would just go back to the workforce. It's, yeah. it's, I will still be pretty young then. You know, it's not like... I'm not just dreaming without an end, you know. Yeah. I'm trying to be realistic over here, and yeah, I hope you guys can believe in me, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. and and did they give give you your give you their blessing? Yeah, or? they did actually. So, um, it was quite difficult at the start, but like my dad, my dad was actually based in China for ten years, so he was. Very, as, as we all know, social media in China is huge. Like, they are huge on social media and they're so much more advanced mm-hmm. uh, than we were back then, especially. Yeah. So, bloggers and influencers and, you know, all these, like, Weibo stars, like, online big personalities, they were earning, like, a lot of money, like, already at that point in time. And at that point in time, Singapore, like, nobody was really doing it full-time. Yeah. So he saw the potential in it. And he's like, okay, if you do it now and you do it well, maybe you can become, like, yeah. something or it can go somewhere. So he really supported me. Whereas for my mom, she was like, are you sure, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but my dad was like, just let her, yeah. you know, like, as long as she works hard at it, um, maybe it, it's it might be worth something. Yeah. So my dad was very supportive, actually. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's awesome that your dad, you know, because he was able to see that. Yes, trend. he he saw yeah. he saw it, and he was actually really supportive in the sense he even like let me use the car, and he would take like the tr- public transport. Oh, so nice himself. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, because he knew that I had to run from shoots to shoots, and like if I were to be spending all the money that I earn on taxi, then it's. You know, so he supported me in these ways. Like, yeah. not give me the money, but like lend me the car. Right, right. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah so it's, he was really nice about it. It's interesting, like how parents, like they, they seem, they seem like they're not supportive, yeah. but but then they do these yeah, small yeah, things yeah, to yeah, yeah. <laughs> to make you to let them to to let you know that they still love you. And oh, and he closed once on my first camera. So wow, yeah, he paid half of it. <laughs> nice. Was it like a le- legit camera? Like it was a like a point and shoot. Like okay. uh, it w- it was a mirrorless camera. It's mm. not like a DSLR, but 
Got it. You know, for someone who just graduated, it's, it was quite yeah, a lot of money still. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, I'm also, I'm curious because like once you, once you graduated, right, mm-hmm. and you started to focus on this, did you have a plan in place or were you just waiting for people to get in touch? So, um, thankfully, because I mentioned to you, I did like, I mean, my final year, like in that last semester, I was kind of already building up quite a lot of traction. I was, I, I didn't go out to do it, but more, of, I was more of like accepting more jobs. So mm-hmm. there were quite a lot of jobs, but I was very limited because of school. Right. Yeah. So at that point in time, I was really like, you know, at least I could just accept them. And once I accepted them, more came and more came and more came. So I didn't really go out to look for it. I was more of like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to accept all the jobs that I can take. And if I have more time, I will use it to create original content. So it was a very simple plan. Yeah. And it just went from there. Until today, it's still kind of the same. Like once I'm done with like the jobs that I have to do, I have to create original content because that's what my followers are following me for. Okay. You know, so I have to give back to them in that way. And and I have to still not not lose myself in the process. And that's very important to me. La. So yeah, it was just that. And then I've been doing it for four years wow. since. Yeah. That's is that is that common though? Like do influencers get that lucky? Like um like once you build a steady stream of people interested, like you won't go hungry? It's not true. Um, uh, I think it's very volatile. Like and this industry is you can be famous in overnight, but you can lose everything overnight as well. Yeah. So um I don't think it's 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 not really about I mean, of course there's a little bit of luck, but a lot of the times it's like consistency, being professional. Um, you know, you want brands to still keep working with you, yeah. not just once, you know, that kind of thing. So a lot more comes into play when it comes to um, earning the money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and keeping your audience happy and growing your audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, yeah, I suppose, I suppose that's the part that I guess we don't appreciate as, as you know, non-influencers. <laughs> like, like it, it must, it must be quite, it's it's similar to like being an actor or or something like that, right? Where where yeah, you get decent money, but sometimes you don't know when the next yeah, it's the, it's it's unstable definitely. Yeah. So for me, like, I mean, I if I keep thinking about money, then then this definitely is not the job for me. You for know, sure. because if I break down the number of hours. I spend working and creating these things versus how much I'm being paid, then my pay is so low, <laughs> you yeah. know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. So I cannot just look at the money. Of course. Or the numbers for, um, you know, as a matter of fact, everyone just looks at the numbers and like, seemingly you're doing very well because you have a lot of followers, but it might not always be the case. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. So I've learned to put all these things behind me and yeah. try to focus on uh, creating good content that I would be proud of and that I want to watch myself. Yeah. Yeah. That's such a great mindset, you know, because <laughs> I mean, especially when in Singapore, it's so easy to worry about, <laughs> you know. I mean, if you keep thinking about these things, right, then yeah. there are definitely way more, e- like better ways or easier ways to make money yep. or be famous, you know. Yeah there are more ways and there are shortcuts and mm. you will be very tempted to take these shortcuts. Yeah. And I don't want to subject myself to that kind of temptation. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What what are some of like the biggest challenges of this line of work, you know, as an influencer? Mm, for me, it's mostly like balancing, uh, you know, sponsored content and original content. And, if I get a sponsored content, how do I convince my viewers that I am taking this up because I love the brand and because I truly see it as a good product I want to share? Just that, of course, if they're paying me for it, why not? Yeah, of course. You know, because nowadays, I think that there's like information overload Mm -hmm. out there in, in the social media space and people don't believe our words trust our words yeah. as, as much as they used to before. 
um, I don't blame them, of course, because, you know, if I know that this post is sponsored, of course, this person is going to say something really, really good and positive about <laughs> yeah. it, right? But how can I convince them that if they didn't pay me, I still think it's a good product, you know? And I'm only taking it because I've tried it myself and I hope you guys can trust me yeah. on that. So right now at this juncture, that's my biggest challenge. Yeah. And, and how do you how do you overcome that? I mean, well, I guess number one, do all the sponsored products that come in, um, are they things that you believe in or uh, does definitely it take time? When I accept them, mm -hmm. it's it's mostly like when I when I am ready to take on the risk of putting my name, like, to recommend something. Gotcha. Yeah, but not everybody believes that, yeah, you know? Yeah. So, to, to a lot of people, it's more of like, oh, but you're giving it for free. Yeah. But to me, I'm, it's difficult for me to tell them that, you know, it's not just because it's free. That's why I'm saying it's good. Yeah. Um, I hope you guys can trust me on that. You right. know, this, this it's just very, very tough. And I think it takes years of like building up like audience that believe you from, believe your words from the very day one and actually bought the products that you recommended yeah. and it, it, it worked for them. That's when they can slowly start to trust you and it takes a long time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I suppose that's yeah that it's it's hard to run away from that yeah you know if they don't trust you they don't trust you what can you do right yeah what what I do notice is um some some of the vloggers I I follow on YouTube for example they have a very interesting approach and mm -hmm. I don't know whether this is something that you personally do or you agree with or where they feel like you know sometimes you, you get a sponsor who just pays over the moon, right? So it's like, it's almost impossible to not accept it. Okay. So what they do is they say, okay, I may not particularly believe in this product, or at least I don't know. I, I just, you know, I've never used it before. But can I create great content where at least my viewers will find it entertaining? So it's almost, it almost doesn't matter that I'm promoting this post because that's not why they're here watching it, right? It's just that because they are watching the video, they become exposed to the product or service. Mm -hmm. But if, if this is not the way the brand wants the product to be shown, mm -hmm. like, I mean, it, 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 will that person say bad things about a product or positive uh, not, things? Not, not so much bad things. Um, I, I'll give you... Maybe I can cite an example. I'm yeah. trying to think of one now. Like, for example, you know, when, when, when Casey Neistat, mm. um, when he, like, he's sponsored by Samsung, right? Yes. And he loves the Samsung yeah. products. But every time a new Samsung product comes out, right, he compares it with the iPhone and he says immediately what is better and which he likes more, yep. what he wishes Samsung could do more. Okay. Of. And so, like, the... It's very balanced it's, in yeah, some sense. it's very sense. balanced. But we watch it because it's really entertaining because you really drop it on the floor. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah. And, and it's, like, it's like, it's just his personality. Yeah. So you watch it for his yeah. personality. Yeah. So we can appreciate that even though it's sponsored content. I mean, know. sometimes, uh, like, right off the bat, if I were to suggest something like this to a client who is paying me, Samsung would not want me to <laughs> even show iPhone in there. Right. Yeah. So... I mean, because Casey Neistat, it's, he's such a big YouTuber. You yeah. know, he's got so many, like, subscribers and follow, a huge following. And everyone likes him for that. And that is very, very clear-cut that mm -hmm. people are watching him for, like, his, his insights. And that's always, that's how he's always been doing things, you know. Yeah. And it's proven to be successful. But for me... I'm not so... I mean, obviously, numbers really, really matter in this kind of case. For sure. And if a client were to pay me, they will have quite a of, you know, brief for me to follow and they will not be happy. Most of the time, they will just be like, no competitor's brand to be shown. <laughs> that yeah. is like the number one for yeah. most. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I, I don't mind that. I can understand why. But for me, maybe I will just kind of um suggest like, you know, instead of bashing another brand or saying that the other brand is not good because if I'm doing that and I'm an iPhone user then I'm being a hypocrite right yeah. 
So instead of that, I would suggest maybe something like, oh, how do I take selfies with the new Samsung phone? You know, mm. something that is more relatable to me yeah. and my followers who follow me for the kind of content that Got it. I like and, yeah. and I post. Do you have do you have creative liberties with, you know, when when a brand comes to you and says, "Hey, we want to do this." Yes, yeah, definitely. How, yeah, how much? How much liberty? Uh, do you have? I would say, ultimately, if I don't like the the idea that they're proposing, I would just not take it up. So oh, okay. that's just hundred percent kind okay, of. But yeah. I mean, it's a discussion, right? Okay. So I hear you and you hear me, and we will always try to reach like a common ground. Mm -hmm. But increasingly, maybe because I've been doing this for a much longer time now, yeah. uh, brands do appreciate it when I come up with the ideas myself and I'll do a storyboard, I'll pitch to them. Um, I want to do this, 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 this month. So nowadays, my clients are mostly like with me for kind of like a retainer, like a six months or one year kind of thing where they go like, I have this budget. Tell me what you want to do with it. Yeah. So I prefer that way more rather than, you know, campaign by campaign. And then yeah. you tell me what you want me to produce. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I guess it really helps with your creative juices, right? Because yeah. you say, six months, yeah. go nuts. Yeah. So I can, you know, just pretty much do anything. Of course, they they have to trust that I have their best interest at heart as well. And like, I understand the brand image. I understand the brand identity and I will create content that is in line with their marketing as well. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's how it's been so far. Got it. Yeah. And um, in terms of like, you know, the challenge of, of, of having your followers believe you, mm -hmm. how, how do you, how do you, try to solve that problem or do you make an effort to... I mean of course I do I mean I think there's no like right answer to that you know like when you gain more followers you will have more people to convince so it's an ongoing struggle <laughs> you know True. True. <laughs> um, and if you if you get a new client you have to think of new ways to convince your existing people who already believed you the last time. You yes. still have to, you know, think of new ways. Um, yeah, so for me, it's it's mostly just trying to give them a very balanced view and at the same time, not accepting things that I really wouldn't recommend. Got That's it. like the number one rule, you know? Yeah. Like, as long as I, I have nothing... I'm not hiding anything. I think like it's also a lot more difficult to catch me on, on something. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. <true. laughs> yeah. yeah. So for me it's like I just don't I just don't um accept yeah. the deal if it's something that I wouldn't That's use true. myself. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean it's good that you're principled, you know. <laughs> it's a lot easier to clean up the mess That's if true. anything goes wrong, you yeah. know. Yeah, just don't contradict anything that you put online as well. That's true. And I and I and I suppose there's really not much you can do to convince people. I mean, I, I, in a sense that if they don't want to believe, then yeah, it's really on them. Like time, right? time will tell. I hope you yeah. know. Yeah, and I mean, I used to follow a lot of these like bloggers and YouTubers. Like, I used to be a big fan girl myself before mm. I started doing all these things, and I was, I would always think like, what is it about this particular person that I just love her so much and like I really believe everything she says Yeah, you know and I want to I mean learn from these things and my own experience and try to be you know like someone like that la, to yeah. or not say try to be someone like that but try to portray that side of me that yeah, you know can come across the screen as more like real mm -hmm. yeah what what was that? What's who's an example of someone you looked up to? So and... I really like Jen Im from Clothes. Um, she used to be called Clothes Encounters. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, on YouTube. So she's been around for a long time. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So I use I still watch her till till today. Yeah. So I I love her like a lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Pardon me, because uh, I'm I'm not so familiar with with this world. Uh, is she from Singapore? Or? No, she's from US. Okay, got it. Uh, yeah, she was like really like the OG, yeah, like yeah. YouTube one of the OG YouTubers. Yeah. Um, where we when we didn't even have YouTubers in Singapore, <laughs> right, right, yeah. you know, yeah. One well, one thing one thing that's great in the US is that the market is so big, right? Mm -hmm. like, even if you even if you you have a very niche topic, 
you can easily get 20, 30k followers. For sure. I mean, yeah, the market is huge. And that's something that, I mean, unfortunately, Singapore being so small, um, it's not that easy to have high followers in terms of numbers. Yeah. Which is also why I say we, I, I have convinced myself to look past that because it doesn't mean that you're less successful. Yeah. Then, then you know, people from even the not not even the US, like Thailand, Indonesia, like our neighbors, like yeah. they are easily like you just throw a stone and everyone is like double or triple the time, like the True. amount of followers, you know. So, I've learned to look past that, yeah, and and just be contented with what I have and yeah. try to get better, and not only for myself but also for my followers and my viewers because. We, I kind of owe it to them, to be honest. Like, yeah. without them, like, who, who are we, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. I, that's, that's a really healthy way of, like, of looking at it. And, <laughs> and, I, and I hope people really pay attention to <laughs> oh. that. Yeah, because, yeah, like, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's very easy to be mm. blinded by the metrics of, you know, it's like, oh, no, only got 50 likes. You know, yeah. <laughs> you, you just lose your mind. But, yeah, I mean, then you will... <laughs> be like okay oh no instagram is changing the algorithm what can i do i want to yeah. do something that will go viral how how many viral content can you come up with in your lifetime <laughs> yeah. that's the thing you know and unfortunately a lot of people have also succumbed to just buying the likes mm. and the followers buying the engagement simply yeah. because it's much easier it's a lot harder it's a lot easier on your heart yeah. <laughs> and um brands you know, it make it keeps brands happy. Yeah. So, but I'm sure brands will figure out that this is not real, right? Um, there isn't a hundred percent foolproof way, to be honest. Got it. Yeah, till now. So everything is only like based on feels. Like, I think it's like this. I think it's like that. So if you buy it subtly, people will not know. Yeah. Mm. There's there's something I'm really interested in knowing is how do you deal with people who with who's like write negative comments or right or like those like just mean things i mean if they're trolling and it's very obvious that they're trolling yeah. then i i'm not bothered by them to well, be honest wow mm -hmm. okay um yeah because they just want a reaction out of me so I always remind myself that like if I were to react in a very negative way, then it gives them more reason to, to you know, want to write back or whatever. But if I just ignore, yeah, what can you do about it? Yeah. You know, you can keep leaving comments. And if it bothers me, I'll just keep deleting them. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like they're really, I think like the power, like we have more power because like it's on our page after all. Yes. Uh, but of course, if it's, not just one person, you know, a few people talking about a particular subject or a particular thing that you did that upset people, then I think it's it's good to also reflect mm -hmm. because, you know, I'm not perfect and I am like, sometimes it's better. I mean, sometimes outsiders see it clearer yeah. Yeah, than, than ourselves. So, yeah, it's it's good to also reflect and, you know, if there's a need to apologize, I'll apologize yeah. or anything. Yeah, but to be fair, I don't really talk about very like touchy or sensitive things. Yeah. So I don't really get <laughs> yeah, yeah. a lot of negative comments because yeah. I talk about things like beauty and fashion, which are all subjective. Yeah. But yeah. But, but I'm sure you have like, um, uh, I don't know what's a insulting thing about fashion, <laughs> but I'm trying no, to create like, an example. No, like not really. Uh, like people would, I mean, to be honest, people can hate on you for anything, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, Like, like people say that I'm a liar because I look so ugly without makeup. So they're oh. like, you lied in your thumbnail. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. I guess it's hurtful, but if I try if I am gonna dwell on it, what like why would I wanna give them the power to take away my rice bowl? This is yes. my livelihood, right? Yes. And so what? Like it yeah. just kind of means that my makeup skills are pretty good, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, so I try to think of it that way and yeah. I'm like, okay, then I'm going to do more makeup tutorials, okay. you know, because I guess I'm good at something yeah. now. Yeah. Wow. But so. did you did you always were you always like this strong? No, 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 no. In the past, of course, when I had less followers, also I had less hate hate comments as well. So yeah. 
I took everything very seriously because I really wanted to improve. Uh, then I started to realize that I can't please the whole world. And yeah. more often than not, they are commenting like with empty accounts that, yeah. you know, that there's no consequences to them at all. Yeah. So I just, I just, you know, decided that if I start ignoring them, like I wanted to see what can they, what more can they do? Yeah. What more can you get out of me if I ignore you? Yeah. And <laughs> true enough, they don't get much because they'll just get tired of just commenting and me right. deleting and you can keep commenting and I'll just keep deleting, you know? <laughs> it's it's, a game, it's not basically. like I'm scared like yeah. that other people will see the comment, but if it doesn't make me happy and this is my page, why? Like what gives you the right to post and what gives what gives you the right to take away, you know, my ability to to delete it? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, Great. just Great. do Great. it. Great. Yeah, I mean <laughs> I, I suppose this I suppose this this comes with time and experience. Yeah, and experience. Right? Yeah. Because to be honest, like the more you uh, the more followers you get, the more hate you're gonna get. It yeah. it's just part and parcel of everything. You can't um expect everything to just be as rosy and peaceful like you, you like it used to. Like yeah. anything I do now, anything I say now, I have to also be more careful than I used to be. Because mm -hmm. I didn't you know, it's it's no longer the same. Like I have more people watching all these things now. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you feel some responsibility to 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 I mean, well I suppose well, let me backtrack. Like, do you know the demographics of your, your followers? Yeah. Um I my most of my followers are from twenty four to thirty five. Okay. Um yeah. Mostly females, okay. because I guess the type yeah, of content yeah, that I do. Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> I mean, I do have male followers as well, but uh, I, majority females. Females, yeah. yeah. So, like, it's do you, how 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 do you know like what type of content they want to see and um and and versus you know the type of content you want to produce is there a conflict right. sometimes uh to be honest no okay <laughs> yeah. <That helps. laughs> to be honest really really no because yeah. like i think from the very beginning i've always been like okay i'm just going to produce the content that i like and i want to watch yeah because this started way before anyone was even following me right right so um as a result of that i attracted people who like to watch the kind of content that i like to produce yeah. So it's a uh, it's quite easy for me. So f like right now, uh, I haven't been made to do or, or feel like I've been forced to do something that I didn't want to do. Uh, I mean, of course, now we have like TikTok, you know, like the younger people yeah. things that I really. I mean, there's definitely a huge like inertia yes, <laughs> for me to yes. be on there because I am. I think I'm much older <laughs> than most people who are on there or people who are watching it, but. Um, I downloaded it today. <laughs> I don't. I downloaded it today, and uh, you know, I'm just gonna start by just watching all these people, and you know, I I can't say for sure that I I will be on there, but yeah. like, I'm open to it, you yeah, know. Yeah. And if I ever want to be on there, it shouldn't be forced, mm -hmm. you know. I I shouldn't need to feel like I need to stay relevant, and I need to be on TikTok in order for me to be relevant. Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. So, so. when you're on TikTok, are you going to do those dances? No, <laughs> I can't dance. That's, unfortunately, I really can't. Okay. So, <laughs> so I, I'm still like trying to explore the app and see like what kind of content I can do yeah. on there. Yeah. I, I don't know for sure now, but yeah. Well, you maybe. have time, I guess. You know? <laughs> There's no real rush to... To, I mean, you don't know. You, yeah. don't, you really don't know. It it might take over Instagram or YouTube someday. That's true. You know, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess. Um. Oh well. Uh, I, I. To kind of the last question, mm -hmm. but I would. I'm. I'm interested in knowing. Um. For someone who's who 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 is starting to, you know, get a lot of likes and followers on Instagram and they're considering the path that you chose, right? Okay. Like, what should they know about it? What should they look out for? And, you know, what can they do to allow themselves a chance to be successful? I think, um, I mean, I think if I were to restart and, you know, do everything from the very beginning again, um, it would be to 
really stay true to yourself and uh you know it's it's really the the how far you can go and how long how long can you be doing this for because after being in this for four years i've seen so many people come and go so many people who went viral overnight and they never produced any anything that was as viral as the first you know um how they started out and yeah I think after analyzing <laughs> a lot of you know different people that I've met um what really stuck by me was how they I mean usually if if you are yourself and you're selling yourself and people like you for you and not you for a skill or you for a dance or a song or whatever you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you for you as a person yes and uh, then that's how you will go for far and you will not burn out so right. that's yeah my advice to mm. someone new it's to to just stick to what they believe in and of mm. course be realistic because it's it's not going to be easy especially now i yeah. think it's going to be harder than it used to be mm -hmm. to start uh but yeah, be realistic. Try not to have so much like expectations first. You know, you're not going to make a million bucks in a year as much as it's what has been glamorized on the media that, yeah. you know, this industry, wow, this person made, made, made how many million in this year? Yeah. You know, what we don't see is the year, are the years of like hard work and just building up a channel is not as easy as it looks. Right. Yeah. Um, do you have any advice uh, for those up and coming influencers to you know, when they're at the negotiation table with brands? Mm, right. Um, I think at the negotiation table, I mean, of course, let let the brand know that like what you think your strengths are, you know, because a lot of times they want they just want someone to be the amplifier to just spread the message. But don't forget that you are your own brand as yeah. well and you have your followers to think about. Yeah. And they might not, I mean, they, 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 they might not have paid you a single cent, right, for any of your posts or, of, or attributed or contributed to any of your, your paycheck or whatever. But um, we cannot just forget that, you know, they invest their time and their money and I mean, their time and their, you know, energy, their emotions into supporting you yeah. and watching your content and I think that's like yeah that's also worth something yeah. so they are shareholders as well stakeholders that yeah. we always forget ooh mm. that's a good way of putting it because yeah. <laughs> they are equally invested yes right? they are invested yeah. yeah so try not to see money as like everything yeah, yeah. that's that's yeah. from me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope that was okay that, yeah, I don't that's, know <laughs> that, that's perfect yeah. really? I, okay. I mean I, I, I think you I uh, what what uh, I mean uh, to be fair to the listeners, I mean technically I've only just met you, but yeah. from 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 what I hear, I I think you're very level headed. I think maybe that comes with experience, or maybe you are very mature all the while. No, I don't know, but <laughs> but, uh, but I don't know. Is I think Thank this you. I think this is great advice. Mm. Uh, hopefully, people don't get carried away by. Yeah, you know, the money or, or or on the flip side, don't get taken advantage of. You yeah, know? I think that's yeah. equally important. I think it's way. not only just for influencers or social media. To be honest, like every industry has some sort of similar, you know, things that they need to do or stage in life that they have to be, you know, at such a stage. So yeah, yeah, I think True. that would be something that I would <laughs> <laughs> advise. That's good. Yeah. What um. Final question, what's next for, for me? Mongo Bong? Oh, <laughs> me? Hmm. I mean, for me, the kind of content that I share is usually like what I'm really going through in my life. So um, I got married last year. So last year was... <laughs> thank you. So last year was a lot about wedding, you know, wedding preparation, um, money, finances. Uh, this year, I'm getting the keys to my house. So yeah, it's it's really kind of like really as I learn along the way, I will share mm -hmm. like what are the tips, you know, and what are the advice that I can give, but and also what are the learning lessons yeah. yeah that I took from, 
you know, all these things. And hopefully that would help like my followers, uh, you know, people who are in the same phase or same stage or going into the same stage yeah. of life. Right. Yeah. So that's what I'm most looking forward to. <laughs> have you have you thought about, I know like some uh, influencers transition to some form of like acting or uh, have you ever considered any of that? I mean... Acting, no, because I know I can't. <laughs> hey, yo, you can't act, you can't dance. I can't act, I can't dance, so yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I can't sing also, so okay. very sad, you know. But, <laughs> um, but I mean, I have been already doing this over the past few years, uh, with, which is hosting. So, nice. yeah, so actually in 2018, I had my own TV show where I hosted my own TV show. It's called Who Runs the World with Mong Chin. Wow. And it was on uh, Lifetime Asia. Okay. So yeah, that show was like my first, um, I guess, attempt or like, you know, experience at hosting. Uh, yeah, so that's what, ever since that show, I have been kind of doing a little bit of hosting here and there. And uh, yeah, so I wouldn't say like, I would see it think of transitioning into a full-time host yeah you know but i think it's very complimentary to my job as well so yeah like now i do host events but most of the time these are like my own events so when i do like makeup demos i don't actually need a host you know i can just <laughs> host myself and then oh did a makeup <laughs> demo <laughs> Well, two in yeah, one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, something like that. I'm, yeah. I mean, it's kind of complimentary, it and is. people don't really think that much about it, and they don't see me as a host. But yeah. I guess I can do what a host can do too. Yeah, yeah something. That's like awesome, that. man. Hopefully, you get more experience, more opportunities. <laughs> Thank to, you to, to do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for for the two or three people who don't know how to find you, how can they find oh, you on, come on. <laughs> on Instagram? <laughs> I was one not so long ago. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> so you can find me on Instagram uh, at mongabong, which is M-O-N-G-A-B-O-N-G. Cool. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Mountain, Thank it was you. a pleasure. <laughs> it was a pleasure for me too. <laughs> Thank you so much. And... Thanks for listening, guys. <laughs> yeah, for all those who went through to the end. It's yeah. awesome. Yes. All right. All right. Thanks, Wang Chin. Bye.